Welcome back. The Brahma Kumaris is an institution focused on self-transformation through spiritual education and personal sadhana. At a time when our country and the world are desperately looking for guidance towards a more sustainable future, the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University seems to offer an answer. Sister Jenti, one of their most exceptional leaders, who has won world-renowned recognition for her contribution to world peace through bodies like the Parliament of World Religions and the United Nations, will soon be touring our country on her mission of peaceful change. In this month of the youth, Sadna found out more. And the Brahma Kumari is also is a body of education, but the whole study is focused not on the outside, it's really focusing on the inside. And what we do here is discover who we really are and realize that actually everything that we really desire or we require to live a very beautiful life actually lies inside of ourselves. We are always looking for ourselves. You know, everything is actually a search to experience the self to, to understand the self more and also unfortunately to um, present the self to the world in a certain way you know and so the main philosophy of the Brahma Kumaris is on identity uh, but we impart a very very beautiful um, aspect of knowledge when it comes to identity which is a term called soul consciousness uh, where we actually try to encourage individuals to see themselves as deeper and more than just the physical package that they might actually be able to view in the mirror. Our motto is that when I change, the world changes. And you know, what is important for us to realize is that if I do take something from someone which is not mine, my conscience will prick me. If my conscience is still quite alive, it will hurt me. And that nobody can take away with. So we all then will be living with something that is hindering us. When I get angry, okay, I manage to say what I want to, but the repercussions of that anger I live with. When I get peaceless, that heartbeat, that anxiety I'm sitting with, when individuals start to notice those things, then they realize that they have to change. People almost have to be ready for taking the responsibility of a personal change. You know, when you think about freedom itself, we all want to be free. But when we have freedom, we make choices can we be responsible for the outcome of those choices? And I think that's where the maturity comes in. The exploration of the self and the consolidation of identity then becomes not uh, who am I, where do I live, who, which family was I born into, where did I study, and what job do I do, what's in my bank balance. It's about what is this love inside of me? You know, what is this peace inside of me? Uh, can I actually get in touch with the truth that's inside of me? And so soul conscious moves our identity away from all of these physical limited labels and takes us very deep into the experience and the expression of soul qualities. Any problem that you would mention that is current in our world today, its solution lies in actually a personal responsibility. And the more we actually allow people to become aware of that, you're taking a step in the right direction to prevent the kind of problems people are now trying to solve. What it should be doing. But the body pulls it down. And Baba has explained this to us. He said that uh, it is body consciousness that takes you away from the original place of who we are, that is the soul. When we choose to focus on the things that's going to actually build personal capacity now, 
uh, and when we empower ourselves on a spiritual level, uh, emotional level, uh, even on a physical level, educational level, vocational level, especially for young adults, um, that greatness, that giant that is going to be born will be invincible and will then have the courage and the fortitude to really just dismiss the past as a bad memory. Sister Jainty was one of the persons who actually gave in her Indian passport and took on a British passport to come to South Africa and support us. So if I think of the last 30 years, she has really been one person who's very aware of the history of South Africa, the current situation. And obviously her heart goes out because one knows the potential of our beautiful country. Uh, we all rejoiced in the celebration of our president who was able to teach us forgiveness and let go of hatred. And today we think about a country that has an amazing uh, constitution and yet the, the living constitution is not in practice. And it's things like this that for her really, um, it stirs her to uh, um, help people understand and uh, perhaps have the courage to stand up. We cannot uh, constantly complain about the fact that so-and-so has an opportunity and so-and-so doesn't. Uh, again, it goes back to this question of focus. We actually need to grab the bull by the horns, I feel, and take every opportunity to empower ourselves so that we can become productive members of society and take ownership, take responsibility for bringing light into our own lives. I think the equality that we're talking about is that each individual feels a sense of peace and love and respect towards each other. And that can only come with a spiritual education or spiritual wisdom. And we can become custodians of that kind of behavior when we seek the strength from within ourselves. And we can very easily justify violence or theft or any level of crime or violation of uh, the human rights of society at large or f violation of human rights on an individual level but actually according to spiritual law we don't have the justification to do that and meditation is a process by which I can draw that power into myself but it's also a process that protects my conscience. I can't actually allow my conscience to be numbed or killed to a point in which I can justify wrongdoing. And meditation will always clean me out and help me to be able to keep myself aware so that I'm a sensitive but proactive member of society.